Welcome back, one and all, to the Religious Studies Project. I'm David Robertson. And I'm Christopher Cotter. And this week, we are brought to you from Wolverhampton University. Indeed, where we are here visiting the BASR, our good sponsors, along with the NAASR. This week's podcast, I'm pleased to bring you, is Aaron Hughes on the subject of religious studies as a discipline. And this is another interview by our good friend, Dave McConaughey. So take it away, Dave. My name is David McConaughey, and today I'm here at the 2015 American Academy of Religion meeting in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm joined by Aaron Hughes, Philip S. Bernstein uh, Chair in the Department of Religion and Classics at the University of Rochester. Hello and welcome. Hi, Dave. How's it going? Good. He is the author of so many things, Uh, just most recently, perhaps, uh, Situating Islam, Uh, The Invention of Jewish Identity, Theorizing Islam, Abrahamic Religions, Muslim Identities, The Study of Judaism, and uh, perhaps just recently released, hot off the presses, uh, Islam and the Tyranny of Authenticity. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. What I think uh, I have been struck by in your work is the consistent and... um, prolonged uh, look at the construction of uh, religious studies departments and using the way that uh, Judaism and Islam have been constructed by those departments uh, Mm. to do the work of of theory. So can you uh, tell uh, us a bit about the way that religious studies operates as a discipline for you, and then uh, perhaps we can move into how Judaism and Islam sure, sure. Uh, operate within it. Are they the same? Do they have to work within the same models? And then we can we can be right off. Okay, yeah. I mean, those are all great questions. I, I think for me, there's there's two two issues in that question. The first thing is what religious studies is, and the second is what I think religious studies should be. So um, I think that what religious studies is is perhaps best uh, symbolized by the best or the the respect what is it the research practices at the AR the, this document that they put out one. right yeah. where one is supposed to promote good and avoid yeah. harm yes. uh, one is there basically that says there's no incorrect opinions everyone's opinions is valuable uh, so that's to me all that's wrong with religious studies what do I think religious studies should be I think it should be a more critical enterprise one where we where, where, where we see ourselves more as critics as opposed to caretakers, one where we uh, look at religion as a human and social phenomena, as, a, as opposed to talking about, you know, the sacred. One where we talk about um, histor- the, the historical origins of Islam, as opposed to just sort of repeating back what later sources say. And I should say that most of my work, uh, you're, you're right to say that there's a, there's a consistency there. It, the, the subtitle of Islam and the Tyranny of Authenticity book <laughs> is called An Inquiry into Dis- Disciplinary Apologetics and Self-Deception. So what I'm doing there is, for me, as a good religionist, the study of Islam in that book and in some of my other works, as the study of Judaism is as well, is an E.G., of larger issues in the field of study. So in the Islam and the Tyranny of Authenticity book, I really try to get at some of the the identity politics, uh, the, the, the rhetoric of authenticity that I think undermine the academic study of, of Islam in, in, the, in the academy. So, uh, there's so much there already, right? So, yeah. so the distinction between what the field is Mm-hmm. Right now, and and what it should or could be. So, with that recent statement that the R it came, it, it had a lot of pushback. As it should, yeah. Uh, as I I think you're right that it should. If, perhaps though, there's a difference between uh, what religious studies is, what the AAR a discipline in which uh, uh, an organization in which the discipline mm-hmm. finds itself, yeah. and then what the field should do. Yeah, right? and and perhaps. In a statement like that, uh, the goal of the people that uh, do the work, mm-hmm. right, and the things that the work does somehow get elided. Yeah, right? yeah. And then we cross that boundary between uh, what we are as a field, identity politics, right. uh, to being what we should be as a field, and then we turn that into identity politics. Too. Yeah, so, no, exactly. So we get this this um, 
uh, ambivalence, right? Yeah. That on the one hand we want to be critical, but on the other hand we want our field to 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 do uh, things that are good with critic. Like you actually said, good religionists, right? Yeah. Not critical religionists. Yeah, right? exactly. Not theoretically sophisticated exactly. religionists, right? And so in that sense, there's a good and a bad way to doing the work of religion, yeah. in your opinion. Right? I, I do, and I think that the, that AAR statement is a bad way to do it. And I think that um, they're all 25-cent words. And they don't even talk about critical research on religion. They talk about critical reflection on religion. Yeah. And so, I mean, who gets to decide what's good scholarship? Who gets to decide what's, what's avoiding harm? And there's such... There, I, I did a... I'm actually writing a piece on it, and I looked at, um, you know, the... The AAA, that's the American Anthropological Association, right. they have these similar things too, but they at least, they're equally uh, full of 25 cent words, but at least they elaborate them. The AAR just gives us these like bullet points and, and written by some of the quote unquote leading scholars in the field. And I mean, my fear with that, and I, I know you want to get to the Islamic yeah. study stuff, but you know, there's all these, ins- like the, the, the granting institution, like middle states, I think they call them in, 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 yeah. in, in New York State, that adjudicate programs. And how do they adjudicate programs? I'm sure one of the ways they adjudicate programs is by going to these major ACLS institutions like the AAR, and they have this definition of what the best research practices are. Right. And then, so this, these can come back to, you know, to bite us in the ass because they will, they will come and programs might very well be adjudicated on this tenure decisions right. might very well be decided on, on these types of, of, of mealy mouth, 25 cent words. So the, so the stakes are high because perhaps the politicking at the, at the organization of the discipline level yeah. can creep downwards into the scholarship that is exactly. in the classrooms and offices yeah, of yeah. the department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that there's real. I think there's. That's why I'm so concerned about it. Is because I think there are real practical consequences, right. and I think that that's what a lot of my work has tried to do is show that we don't just operate in a vacuums as 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 disembodied scholars, uh, you know, in, in the ivory tower, but that all our concepts and our genealogies come from places, and they have real repercussions. So when we talk about when when we just repeat the, to use the example again, we just repeat back that Mohammed received the Quran from the Archangel Gabriel without looking at the historical consequence of how a text comes to be. I mean, that, that, we're just kidding ourselves. Yeah. So I, this dawned on me when I was teaching the, the three Judaism, Christianity, and Islam at my old university, and I would tell the, you know, we would look at the Hebrew Bible and we'd look at all the source criticism and rhetorical criticism, you know, J, E, P, and D. This is how the, this is how the Hebrew Bible came yeah. to be. Then you get to the New Testament, you look at Q scholarship and you look at all the redactional criticism. And then you get to Islam and you say, oh yeah, and Mohammed went up to Mount Hira uh, around Mecca and received the, Cor- the Quran from Gabriel. So why, so why do you think that there is a difference between? Between those, is there is there is there no tradition of that scholarship, or is that tradition of scholarship somehow too embedded within structures that are not accessible to the West? So yeah, that's, there's a language problem. Why why is that? No, that's a great there? question. Um, I, I think that. That's not a religious studies question. Mm-hmm. People do this. A lot of Europeanists. Where I was just at a, at a I just gave a lecture in Geneva, and uh, I met the Islamicist there who was trained in America, Canadian by birth like me, and uh, he says that most critical scholars of Islam just think the AAR is a joke. Like, they, they, they don't, they don't, so there is that, there is that history of critical scholarship, but in religious studies, Islamic religious studies, which I differentiate from Islamic studies, that's now written off as Orientalist, or, as, or, or even worse, uh, Islamophobic. So there is critical work done in that's what I, I in in the books I try to differentiate between Islamic studies, which I see as more critical, and Islamic religious studies, which is not critical at all. So, so it, it strikes me that that it, if the difference between for you between Islamic studies and Islamic religious studies is that critical hinge, no. uh, is it the context of? Religious studies in the, the U.S. Is it the training uh, theoretical? Is it the or is it the climate of uh, that we live in today? I think it's the, like, what what yeah. provokes 
Islamic studies to be able to do that criticism. Yeah. Suddenly, when you're in religious studies department, you can't you can't do it, or we're we're not doing it. Perhaps both. We're not encouraged to do it. Yeah, you're right, and I think that it's a climate thing. It's the 9/11. Everything everything hinges on on 9/11, right? Because you have to um, the this, the scholar of Islam becomes uh, or the v- vernacular bothers me here because because I'm trying to so the scholar of Islamic religious studies maybe that's the term I want to use in the aftermath of 9/11 had to explain Muslims to to Americans and of course the only way they wanted to do that was to you know use this rhetoric of this is good as this is what a real Muslim believes this is what a bad Muslim believes a good Muslim is a Democrat believes in liberal democratic justice. A bad Muslim or an an inauthentic Muslim, a fake Muslim, is somebody who would fly a plane into a building. So there becomes this rhetoric. And I worry that this rhetoric has really just, we've just ran with it. The religious studies departments. Yeah, I think it has. So so (laughs) if we think that that's true, I'm suspicious. Fine, yeah, that's good. I'm suspicious of the narrative because I think in part at least, that the diversity of the field might not be captured by such a statement, which mm-hmm. is to say that, that I'm not, uh, as a non-expert in Islamic religious studies, certainly, and certainly not in Islamic studies more generally, um, it's, t- it's tough for me as an outsider. I think it's tough for a lot of outsiders yeah. approaching uh, what is the range of issues. So my perspective when I come to it is, hey, here's a new book by Aaron Hughes about Muslim identities. Mm-hmm. It seems... Um, uh, Perfectly appropriate for an undergraduate class. It uh, frames uh, Muslims in certain ways. It talks about uh, the origins of some of the practices, and, and, mm-hmm. and so it puts all these things together. It's it's not. Is it that kind of work that you're citing? Is it a different? Kind yeah. Of work beyond that, I'm proud of that book. Um, that book is uh, so. The subtitle of Muslim Identities is an introduction to Islam, and that is written as you say as a, as an introductory textbook. But it's written as an introductory textbook that tries to absorb or tries to bring in both sets of voices. So, for the example, the the chapter on the origins of Islam, I talk about some of the Orientalist theories about where the, you know, we can't believe that the Quran just fell from he- heaven. So, what are some of the what's some of the critical work being done to show the various sources? Where where did the text come from? In Islamic religious studies, that's a that that question is verboten. You don't talk about that. But then I try in the then then I put I juxtapose that with the Muslim accounts. Right. So I try to bring in both accounts because I think that's how we're. I mean, I think you put your finger on it, right? In, in some sense, if we went to world religions textbooks and we did, you know, a survey of twenty-five or thirty, mm-hmm. uh, I'm I suspect that your contention that by and large, when we approach Jewish or Christian materials, that those sections within the world religion textbooks are going to say uh, something about the redacted history and the compilation of those initial documents. Mm-hmm. And when we come to the section on Islam, uh, that it may say that uh, Muhammad received the revelation over a period of time, mm-hmm. uh, but it may not provide the critical redaction of it. It may say this was an oral narrative that was later written down and mm-hmm. attempted to be preserved in the most pristine form that, mm-hmm. that it could be. But that that same parallel that we might look for uh, critically would be absent. Yeah, yeah. So, so if your textbook remedies that uh, for at least that one, it tries one, to yeah that one bit. Then, uh, what other areas are we talking about within? Okay, good. So, what else I try to do in that book is in later chapters. Is that the way we're talking now? You, I, I mean, I'm not trying to say that all work on Islamic on Islam should be in the the early period. But what I also do in the textbook is in the later period where I try to look at the diversities of modern Islams. I mean, I bring Bruce Lincoln in. I talk about his, you know, I, 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 I uh, reproduce his chart about religious maximalism and religious right. minimalism. Uh, so I try, I, I really, I, I go for a, uh, uh, I try to include not only insider and outsider voices, but I also try to provide a framework. Uh, and I, I think it's, it's 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 good. I mean, I I, I really am I'm pleased with what I what I was able to do in the uh, in, in it. So, do, do you think that that uh, uh, 
your attempt to overcome the problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that a problem that should be familiar to, to other readers, uh, people that have been working in the Jewish textual tradition and then what they have done to critically appraise it? You cite Jacob Neusner, for mm-hmm. instance, as kind of a role model in that respect. Yeah. Can you explain how yeah, that is? Yeah, that's great. I mean, the reason I use Jacob Neusner as a role model in, in that book is because Jacob Neusner provides a paradigm. I, I'm not say. I, I mean, I have problems with his work, but Jacob Neuster is an insider. He's a quintessential insider. Uh, you know, a uh, Jewish kid, American Jewish kid from West Hartford, uh, became a rabbi because he thought that you had to become a rabbi to become a scholar of Judaism. So definitely an insider. But then someone who had a real problem with the way it was taught and said, you know, I can be a Jew and I can be critical of this stuff. I can, I can try to recreate... Uh, he said that until he came on the scene, I mean, the work that was done in Jewish studies could have been done in 1280 or 1880 as opposed to 1980. So he tried to bring in this critical apparatus. I'm not saying, I mean, in Islamic studies, that critical apparatus exists, but it just doesn't exist in religious studies. Instead, we have people that I think are, I think it's it's just, it's rife with, with identity politics. It's uh, where people are confessional. And I'll say this that a lot of a lot of people have a hard time, and and this is why I think I've been consistent. So I wrote "Situating Islam," met with it was you know it was fairly quiet, and I was up at Calgary. I didn't get a lot of reception. Then I wrote "Theorizing Islam," and the responses began to trickle in. And now I think that a lot of people know me in the field as either someone who is a critic or as a gadfly or as an asshole. I don't know, but I'm I'm just trying to I'm trying to maybe this is a way to frame it. In Hegelian terms, I think in Islamic religious studies we have a thesis. I'm providing the antithesis, and I hope that there will be some kind of synthesis. And I've met a lot of, I get a lot of emails every time I write something from young graduate students, both Muslim and non-Muslim. I assume they're Muslim because they have Arab or Muslim sounding names. And they say, you know, thank you for doing this, that for, for showing us that there's a different way to do it. Because, you know, the, this goes back to the politics of the academy. When the apologists call the shots, they're, these are the ones that write, these are the guys that are the, do the blind peer reviews. These are the people that read tenure files. So fields are inherently conservative. And because I also work in Jewish studies, and you didn't mention it, but my chair is a chair in Jewish studies, I've been, I'm afforded protection. I don't, I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to go and, and write this apologetic drivel for the sake of promotion. And, and uh... So, so if, we, if we take your claim then that, that um, uh, some of the reception uh, of your work is thank you for pointing out critical uh, inefficiencies mm-hmm. in the presentation of Islam. Um, I, I have to ask, because I think it kind of is in the public waters, uh, when we present that criticism, right? yeah. if, if uh, when, I should not say if, when uh, Jay-Z Smith and Brian Rennie, right, uh, when they confronted Eliada with uh, accusations that Eliada's work was crypto theological, mm-hmm. right? That he had been doing nothing but promoting a new essentialist That's version right. of religion, you know, of the sacred within mm-hmm. religious studies, mm-hmm. and that what he was doing is theological. Um, the question is, if we're going to do a move like that, right? If we're going to say, uh, some of you that are working in uh, Islamic religious studies, mm-hmm. to use your term, uh, seem to be doing theology or normative American liberal, neoliberal, mm-hmm. pluralistic uh, valuing of Islam. Um, how can we promote the dialogue with them? Because because I've heard a couple of things so far. Um, uh, the AAR is not home to critical folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the people that have produced it have not produced work that is sophisticated. Mm-hmm. And I fear, and, I, and I'm not sure whether it's an unfounded fear or not, I fear that if you were to approach those scholars with those concerns, um, that uh, the phrasing of the that dialogue is important, right? Because yeah. because what I, I I take you to be doing is inviting them, uh, be as critical as you can be with the apparatus appropriate to religious studies. You seem to have strayed from the good religionist to go back to your mm-hmm. initial term that path. Mm-hmm. Is is it a corrective in that sense? I'd like to see it as a corrective. I'd also like to see them respond to it more. 
So, so, so if the the AAR has not been hospitable for it, where should that response take place? Maybe NASA, the North American Association for the Study of Religion. Um, maybe uh, in the pages of Method and Theory in the Study of Religion, the journal I, I edit. Um, so, so the more explicitly critical, uh, theory-minded wings of, of the discipline. I think so, because, because that's my home. And I mean, maybe this is as good a place as any is to say that, you know, I'm, who is my audience? My audience is in part the people I criticize, but I'm not going to convince them. So I would say my main audience is to go back to the point I made earlier that I see Islamic religious studies as an EG or as an example of this crypto theologizing that exists at the heart of the American Academy of Religion. And the, I've been on some high profile committees at the AAR and I'm, I'm either happy or sad to report that the AAR is as not even crypto theological, but is as theological now as it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. A recent controversy, maybe we'll, we'll uh, anonymize the names, but in the recent promotion of the AAR's new vice president, president in nominee, yeah, yeah. there were uh, members of the community uh, that felt that the, that the candidates that were selected did not reflect the appropriate critical apparatus yeah. of, of religious studies. So, so so uh, I think at least you and and the folks that worried about those appointments, right, that the choices that were there did not reflect the critical apparatus yeah. that appropriate to the, there does seem to be kind of um, some brackets, right? Yeah. Being put around the field in some pretty... It's crazy. Things. But these are not new, these are not no. new arguments, right? No, no. I mean, I, what bothers me, I guess, is the... Um, uh, I edited a book series for the American Academy of Religion called the Academy Series, which is a first book series, and it's supposed to publish the best scholarship amongst people that are recently graduated. Of the maybe 10 books I've published, I'm proud of one. The rest are just... Don't, don't, don't tell us more. <laughs> yeah, the rest are just... I'm not like, But the rest are just... It's like liberal, Christocentric theologizing. So I actually, I'm resigning from it. But this goes back to the point is that that, that presidential or vice presidential election was to me was abysmal. I mean, I don't, I'm not a Christian. I don't know anything. But I mean, when people are telling me these are two evangelical Christians, and then I, I look them up and, and one is writing books on like... Systematic theology. Systematic, right. And, and, and the family, like the marriage and family, and, and talks about the sanctity of life. These are buzzwords. Right. I mean, in one, I, I think the person that actually, I mean, I'm not allowed to name it, but I mean, he was originally opposed to same-sex marriage, but then he had a turn in Heideggerian terms and now is fourth. But I'm like, who gives a damn? This, is, this, is, this has nothing to do with the academic study of religion. And then if you top it all off, which I didn't really talk about this, the two, how's this for bad stereotypes, the two choices for treasurer were two Jews. Uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, uh, I, I think the, what we have to be confronted with, right, is that um, the identity politics of such decisions really matter. To, to everyone involved, right? Uh, favorable, unfavorable, yeah. pro, con, wh whatever it is, like n none of these choices are not being analyzed. Yeah, right? no. So, so whether or not you approved of the the uh, appointments, whether or not you approved of the candidate selection, mm -hmm. whether or not you approve of the diversity of them, right? Everyone is watching. Yeah. And then they're trying to use to the best of their abilities their kind of sense of the feel. Yeah, right? yeah. To to approach it. So, so in that respect, like. I think what's exposed uh, when we get a, a kind of like minor crisis or at least uh, maybe a kind of a dialogue about the selection of, of uh, vice presidential candidates yeah. or when we get uh, people who are writing books and we're trying to understand whether or not they're presenting a mm -hmm. normative Islam. Or the people that are that are uh, on the selection committees for the book prizes or with all those things. that, that, that None of this is transparent. And let me people. return to something, David. Is like, look, let's go back to the AAR statement, the, sure. uh, the best research practices. Yeah. What is promote truth telling, being transparent, right? Promoting good, not avoiding harm. These are these are twenty five cent words. I think if we were to apply it to these things that we've just talked about, you'd be like, "Who's good? Who's harm? Who's who's true? Who's 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 tr who's truth?" I mean, it's so. So in that sense, I mean, the big tent approach, 
right? Uh, yeah. Sustainable or unsustainable? Unsustainable. It seems like well, you're 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 wanting to close the doors. Yeah. Uh, in really clear places. Well, that's what we do in NASA, and I think that the uh, uh, the great paradox is the only people that aren't welcome in the Big Ten approach are people that do the critical study of religion. Um. Do you? And and I bring the point back again. Do you think that's because the way in which the criticism is being raised is t- too biting? Or two. Yeah, you know, is that that's a good. No, that's a great. I mean, that's a great question, and I some I ask myself that, and uh, I think sometimes it is, but sometimes that's how you get people to listen, because uh, if not, they just don't pay attention. Um, and but it's it's uh, so according to the, the go back to that document that we've talked about, Tom, because I've been writing on it, is that I guess according to the AAR best research practices or whatever that thing's called. I would not be qualified. I would not count as a good researcher because I look at me. I'm. <laughs> you can see me. I'm. I mean. I'm. I'm. Perhaps I'm not promoting good. Perhaps I'm. I'm. I'm not telling the truth. I mean. I, I think I am telling the truth. But th- these are all. It's like collegiality, right? I mean, collegiality is that thing that people use to. Uh, no one can tell us what it means, but it's always used to deny people tenure or to do to do this so i'm really bothered about these these uh, types of of issues so i want to be charitable both to to the people that were criticizing yeah yeah and and to the to the perspectives of criticism and i think the the way perhaps for us to do that in this short interview format yeah um where you know i think it's easy for um us to say hey go read the full argument I, i think in part um Perhaps what differentiates it for me is if I'm criticizing uh, uh, a work, mm-hmm. right? I'm not criticizing the, the person. Yeah, no, right? I never do and, that. No, and, no. And yeah, so so we're always avoiding the ad hominem. Like, yeah, yeah, right? no, the yeah. Slippage into the person that's doing it. But but in that sense, if your claim mm-hmm. uh, is that these scholars are putting their identity into their work, yeah. If that's your claim, then when you criticize their work. Yeah, you're criticizing that. That's right? that, and, that's and, the academy. And that yeah. may be that may be an unavoidable. Yeah, offense. yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, when scholarship is only is skin deep, I mean, it's you're always going to draw a little bit of blood. So, so not to put too fine a point on it, but but um, it's been asked, and I'm not sure that I agree with the the question, but I want to raise it anyway. Sure. Is is that because there's something different about? The study of Islam, not necessarily something different about Islam, but the study yeah. of Islam and keeping it on a kind of disciplinary level yeah. uh, in the academy. And you suggested earlier that perhaps it is the post nine eleven climate, but there are there other. I think forces? there are. Yeah, I think there's the. the I, the, I wanted to respond to one thing you said before I sure. get to that, and that was. Um, oh God, I can't remember. So let well, let me go to. That. I think the other thing, I sometimes compare Islamic religious studies to the formation of Jewish studies, uh, another topic I've written about. And I think as some of my colleagues have said, I'm, I'm no less charitable with the study of Judaism than I am with the study of Islam, so I'm an equal opportunity uh, uh, critic. Um, so the, uh, um, and this is why it sometimes bothers me when people refute my work, or they don't really refute it, but when they talk about me, they just talk about how Hughes has a chair in Jewish studies, is it? and then that's just code, right? It's like, so, um, uh, I think that, uh, to go back to the, the question, is that is, Islamic studies is today where Jewish studies was in 1800, at, the, at its formation. And that is, Jewish studies entered the academy because Jews didn't have equality, Jews didn't have a, weren't emancipated in Germany, and, and scholarship, even though it was done under the guise of Geschichte or history, actually had a real apologetic purpose, which was to show Germ, non-Jewish Germans that, yes, the Jews have a history, therefore they need emancipation. So I think that something's going on like that so, today. So, it, so if that's the argument, and, and I don't know, that that strikes me kind of as, as a stunning claim, right? To imagine that uh, in the post-9-11 climate of what scholarship is, you know, 15 years after the yeah. event, uh, that um, uh, we've been pushed back prior to all the work that was done in religious studies on Islam in the moments before 9-11. So, mm-hmm. so if we were to study the works that had appeared in the 1990s, mm-hmm. would, would we have seen the same normative stuff? I don't think we would have seen it as much. 
And I think that so here, it's a, so it's a growth of the phenomenon. I think it is. Cultural. Yeah, and in some of my books and articles, I've tried to show or document how, I mean, there were very few Islamists in America before 9-11. Virtually overnight, I mean, there's this exponential rise in, in, in it. So in Situated in Islam, I try to tell the story of how Islamic religious studies came to be in the, the you know, 1960s, 1970s, and and so, yeah, I think that the Islamic study, Islamic religious studies, is is perhaps it's just undergoing a hiccup in its growth. I mean, who who knows where it will be in ten years? But that's why I think, though, that people like me and my colleagues, and I'm certainly not alone. I'm perhaps the most vociferous in, in, in my critique. I think that we need to, as I said earlier, to always offer an alternative. And I mean, as Neuster would always say about his critics, if if you don't agree with me, write a better book. And and I think um, due to time constraints, we're going to leave it there. No. <laughs> I, I, I'm comfortable with that place, though, because yeah. at the end, I think it puts the focus where it deserves to be, right? Yeah, sure. On the scholarship that is produced mm-hmm. and trying to make sure that what that scholarship does uh, seems to be using the critical apparatus of the field as you see it. Is that, yeah. is that accurate? Yeah, I think it is. I yeah. think it is, Dave. It was wonderful to hear Dave there speaking with Nasser's Dave vice president. So Nasser's once again, thanks to Nasser and to the BASR. Um, so yeah, we've just been down here at Wolverhampton uh, in our other capacity um, on the committee for the British Association for the Study of Religion. Some interesting chat, nothing, of course, that we can talk about here. Um, But it's been quite nice to see the campus where we're going to be having the BSR conference from the 5th to the 7th of September this coming year. And the theme is uh, Religion Beyond the Textbook. Beyond the Textbook, yes. And part of the Beyond the Textbook will involve us uh, probably talking about our new book, After World Religions, Reconstructing Religious Studies, which has just been published. Um, And and a contributor who has not contributed to that book, but contributed to one of our podcasts um, a couple of years ago, Martin Stringer, has been confirmed as the keynote speaker for the conference as well. So. That's all good news. Um, We didn't talk about what news we might have. Well, I thought that that was a sort of good enough selection of news there, was us talking about being in Wolverhampton and the BSR is a wonderful conference. Um, That might be news enough for our listeners. But um, our listeners should, of course, come back next week. We're going to be starting a new series. Um, of lecture, uh, of podcasts, sorry, from um, A. David Lewis, who's actually appeared on the podcast twice now as an interviewee. Um, these are interviews that um, he had recorded uh, a couple of years ago um, for for another project and didn't manage to, to find a use for them. And he very kindly said, hey, these might fit quite well with the Religious Studies Project. And indeed they do. Yeah, and the series is based on the idea of... Uh, religious studies and popular culture Um, and the the first one um, bringing you next week uh, was chosen because it kind of directly sets up the series it's called uh, uh, popular culture studies and bruce springsteen escaping and embracing religion and it's with uh, kate mccarthy so uh, thanks for to dave for uh, giving us these and there'll be a couple more of those coming up absolutely i'm really looking forward to that um We've got um, to get out into Wolverhampton now to sample the local hostelries because, of course, that is a very important aspect of any conference is the the socialising aspect of it. So um, we're probably going to sign off just now, but we'll remind you about our Facebook page, our Twitter, our Google+, our new YouTube channel, and, of course, don't forget about our Amazon.com.co.uk and .ca links um, if you're making purchases of popular cultural items. They are, they really are Very good. They really are uh, an excellent way for you to support the project without spending any of your own money, just a little uh, redirected click, and it makes a big difference to us. Um, so other than that, all I want Thanks to say listening. is, Chris... Thanks for listening.